right, so we'll, let's jump into uh, our topic today. I'm going to go through the grid presentation, but then I want to kind of talk about how we, how I do it as well on more of a local level, because this is great. It's a nice stock presentation, but, and it speaks to building a business with finding deals very much so like wholesalers do, but it doesn't speak to what someone who isn't trying to make this their full-time job of finding deals uh, does. And it's not my full-time job to find deals. My full-time job is to run my team and the brokerage and all that stuff. The This is my hobby. This is my part-time job. This is my side hustle. This is my retirement plan. So we'll do. We'll get through this first, and then I'll show you guys some things I do and how I approach it to help build up what you're doing. So today's topic is how to find deals. Real quick, we'll jump into what is GRID? We go over this every time, but GRID is a global real estate community built for investors by investors. We're not gurus. We're a group of real people doing real estate deals. If you go online, there's a bunch of GRID Facebook pages, information online. There's like 100,000 members or something. And they're everywhere. And connect with them. I connected with a GRID leader from Virginia recently. And he was trying to refer me a regular home buyer. So we started talking about deals down there. Um, and he's like, yeah, you should visit my community. Come on to one of our Zooms because buying houses down there are a lot cheaper than buying houses here, you know? And if you're thinking about investing in other areas, it'd be nice to have an agent that's local, that's investor friendly. That, And if you're running a grid, you have to qualify. Like you have to it, have done a, so many deals and be so active. So they're already vetted for you. So it's a good option. Um, our mission is to connect, learn from, and collaborate with like-minded people interested in building wealth and creating impact through real estate. And that being said, like you don't have to do that here, right? Like if you if you live in Delaware County, there's only a few spots you can really even afford them. I don't even afford them anymore. So you're like, okay, five years ago, you could have bought a house in a certain zip code around here for 50 grand. It doesn't exist anymore unless the place is getting knocked down, right? But there are places in America you can still buy a place for 50 grand. So find someone tapped in and grids a great network for that. Um, so we, uh, we welcome investors of all experience levels, brand new, super experienced. We're lifelong learners and we believe everyone has value to share. So please invite anyone new or uh, experienced to our meetings. Like I said, we are, there's a thousand great communities. There's over 2000 leaders. Uh, there's plenty of members. So please tap into that. Um, so who are we? Who am I? I'm Will Holder. I run the William Holder Realty Team and Remax Classic. Uh, I run this group because I'm trying to find like-minded investors and help people build up wealth for real estate. It's like a passion of mine. It's why I got into real estate. It's why I started selling real estate because I wanted to be a real estate investor. Um, you know, I, I moved here in this area in 2002 from the Caribbean. And we lived with my grandparents in the Caribbean. And in like 2010, my mom was telling me that uh, the house, my granddad left the house for me after he passed away in the Caribbean. It's a house like he built, you know, there and, um, but my mom has always managed it, took care of it and turned it into four apartments. And I never thought about it because it was always her thing. And, uh, she was telling me in a conversation, she's like, oh, the house needs a roof. And I'm like, oh, well, do you guys like need money? Like, and she's like, no, nah, we'll pay for it. You know? And I'm like, I started to think about it. I'm like, oh yeah, there's four rents coming in and it's paid off. Like the house takes care of itself. Right. And that's what got, led me to read Bigger Pockets, not Bigger Pockets, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know, the one book that gets everyone into it. And then I started searching online. I found Bigger Pockets. And back then it was YouTube videos. Now it's podcasts. Um, and uh, I really wanted to become a real estate investor. But turns out to do that, you need to have money. <laughs> My current job, that job I had at the time, wasn't making a lot of money. So did a couple side hustles, never really worked out, got into real estate, realized I like selling real estate, sold real estate, started that full time, backed my way into real estate investing. So 
that's who I who I am, and now I run my team, and you know, selling real estate's my day job. I love it. Investing is my hobby. Um, the accomplishment, what we're looking to accomplish here is just be a group of investors together. Hopefully, do deals together eventually. Help you all grow, you know. And uh, I do value really good investors that are doing this at a high level. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of working with like slum lords or anything like that. Like, I want people who are providing housing to provide good housing. You know, affordable housing, uh, reliable housing to be good landlords and bring up the neighborhoods they're investing in versus bringing them down. So how you can connect with me or us, William Older Realty Team uh, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok for however long that's around, <laughs> uh, you know, YouTube, my phone number is 610-657-6215. Uh, email William Holder Realty at gmail.com. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have wore a sweatshirt. It's hot in here. <laughs> anyway, uh, am I so tell a little about ourselves? So we'll go around the room real quick. Start with me. I'm currently an investor. I own 19 properties. I have 63 units throughout Pennsylvania, nothing outside of Pennsylvania. Um, I've done probably about 10 to 15 flips. Yeah, somewhere between 10 and 15 flips. Not a huge fan of flips, but because you have to pay taxes, and I'm not a fan of taxes, but, you know, taxes and debt, right? You can't really get away from them. So uh, I don't do flips to get money off them. I do flips to buy more properties, and kind of a necessary evil, I call it. I'm interested in burrs. I love buy, renovate, rent, refinance. Yes, it's difficult to do, but... It gives you the opportunity to rinse and repeat your money and lets you scale at the pace that I want to scale at. So, you know, I never wanted to be the guy that bought a property every few years. And by the time I'm, you know, in my 60s or 70s, I had 10 paid off because it just wasn't going to be enough. I wanted to scale faster. I wanted financial freedom faster and the Burr method worked for me. So I'm always looking for properties with equity. Um, I'm hoping to learn from you guys, anything you know about investing, uh, the, any deals you have, anything like that, um, creative financing, et cetera. And that's me. So we'll start around the room. How's it going? I'm Jim DeStefano. I am, uh, new to investing. I actually don't own any doors. Um, I am in the, in the, uh, in the industry. I do work for mortgage, uh, lending. So some familiarity with what's going on in the background, um, but really learning, uh, looking to learn more about investing because you know I really don't know where to start. I really don't know where it's a great topic to find the deals. So um, definitely excited for that. Um, I hope to benefit from the group. I mean, I hope to meet some new people, you know, learn more about investing, and hopefully, like Will said, and start investing with some other people as well. So. No real interest in any specific properties. Yeah, like I said, just learning. This is, you know, literally the second investor meeting I've ever been to. So, nice. Tim? So. Um, to make it among Will's team. Uh, I've invested in the past, not currently, but do want to get back into it. Uh, just trying to learn more for myself and my clients. Uh, Chris Conus. I am a painting contractor by trade. In my own business. Uh, I do have uh, six doors with my son and two doors with my wife. And then I've also flipped somewhere around Will's number, around 14, 15, 16, 17, somewhere in there, 17 flips over the last four years. Great. Uh Computer cooperate, important legal stuff, blah, blah, blah. Don't sue us. Okay. Just give me yeah. free information.
Okay. Again, we record these and post them on our social media. So your voice is heard, sorry. Um, all right, so setting the stage, if you're a real estate investor or a full-time real estate agent, you're in the sales and marketing business. It's you're looking for deals, right? Don't be afraid to sell. So if you're a regular investor, post on your Facebook. Hey, by the way, friends and family, I invest in real estate, all right? Do you know anyone that has a deal? Some of the best deals I've found have been that way, right? Don't ignore the small stuff, right? The same stuff you do to market yourself as a realtor, as a lender, uh, do it as a real estate investor as well. Some of the best investors that I follow on, like even locally, all they're doing is posting about the deals they're doing, what they're looking for, fun things. And I see people responding to them all the time. Hey, my aunt has a brother who, you know, locked himself in the house and doesn't want to leave for the last five years. Can you help? That's what investors are looking for, right? We're looking for a deal like that. So don't, uh, you uh, um, so, you know, don't be afraid to market yourself, even on the smaller platforms. I mean, Facebook's not a small platform, but a more common platform like Facebook, you will find great deals. And the reality is off-market deals are going to be the best deals you find, right? Uh, what's up, man? So prior to COVID, DC, uh, you could find good deals on the MLS. They exist. They don't exist anymore. Okay. If a house is on the MLS, not saying you can't find a okay deal, but you're not going to find a great deal. You're not going to find a deal with enough meat on the bone that especially if you're a new investor or starting to get seasoned and you need room for mistakes, oopses, you're not going to find that deal on the MLS most likely, right? They're out there. There's finds a lot. You know, we do find them from time to time, but they're not frequent. And you're going up against a lot of competition, okay? Before COVID, your average home buyer wasn't looking at fixer-uppers because there's plenty of options for them. You know, when I sat a listing appointment, you know, big pitch I had back then was, oh, the average days on market in this neighborhood is 70. We're selling them in 25. You imagine that? Like now it's like, oh, your house isn't going to last three days, right? Um, that's the change. And the reason being is regular home buyers are saying, oh, well, I can't find me a fixed up home because there's 25, 30, 50 people bidding on it. I'll go buy a fixer upper and I don't need to worry about making a profit on it. So I will pay the maximum amount I can pay for that house while still giving me a little bit of equity to fix it up. I don't care. Because I can be into it 100%. So the deals have changed. You're not going to find them as easily on, on, uh, on the MLS. So whether you want a wholesale or a, whether you want to wholesale a home, fix and flip a property or purchase a rental, nothing happens until you get a lead. And that only happens through prospecting, prospecting networking, marketing. So all goes back to what we do in our business as well, which is I can't sell a house to nobody, right? I have to find someone to sell a house to. How do I do that? Prospect, I network, I market, right? Um, it's important that you are purposeful. So you can waste a lot of valuable time and money if you don't have a great plan or a model to copy a little bit. If it's not broken, don't fix it. You know, I a lot of the things we do as like on our real estate team, I've just listened to the most successful agents and I'm doing what they're telling me to do, you know? I'm just like picking and choosing the things that I like that I think will work for my market. Same thing goes for investors. There's a ton of investors out there. You don't have to pay for any of this information. Like investors are pumping out free information on YouTube, Instagram, 
TikTok because content makes money. Content is king. So they're putting it out there. They're sharing all this information. You don't have to pay 20 grand to go learn how to invest with no money, right? It doesn't, don't do that. Like there's plenty of free and I've never paid for a real estate investing seminar. It's a ton, a ton of free information. So figure out what all the successful guys are doing. Figure out where they started. Don't go to where they're at now, mm -hmm. right? Because right now, you know, the big guys are flying around in private jets to look at 80 unit buildings. You're not starting there, right? So where did they start? What was their first project? Figure that out and implement what they're doing. And I will say this, if it's too good, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true, right? It, it's that simple. It's rare, like, and I've never had it happen where you find a deal that's too good to be true and it's not complete crap, mm -hmm. right? It is, if you hear some guy telling you, you can do this process where you get the person to put it in a trust and then you backdoor into it. No, like it's there. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. The best investing is the most simple investing. Find a deal with money, with equity, and fix it up, right? You don't have to get crazy about it. Now, there are interesting ways you can learn, interesting ways you can learn about how to buy the properties, how to manage them, things like that. But the reason everyone is getting, becoming billionaires overnight is because there's no shortcut to this. You do have to put in the work and you do have to find the right types of deals. So the goal is to create a predictable or create predictable opportunities and revenue by becoming a dominant force in any vertical you decide to go after. We call this approach zone, all right? It's, it's the ultimate sales and marketing system designed to help you zone it or own it. So you, you'll be the most successful by niching down, right? If you pick a market that you're good at, you can crush that market because it's easier to evaluate that market. I remember one time, just once, I tried to go to the Delaware County Sheriff sale. And this was again, probably 2017. And there were contingents of guys there. There was the contingents that bid on Sharon Hill. There was the contingents that bid on Chester. And I, I, I'm thinking, Every property that came up in this area, these guys were paying more than I would ever pay for it. So I started talking to them and they're like, yeah, we have crews of guys that are just going from house to house so we can overpay because we're getting the work done for cheap because they're there. And I'm like, oh, so they have a zone that they've picked. Uh, and I got to figure out how to turn this. stop this from timing out so quickly. Um, they have a zone they've picked and they own their zone, right? So Zero in on your target market. And remember, your target market doesn't have to be your target market forever. It's just your target market now, right? So if you're targeting an area that doesn't have a lot of multifamilies, well, if you pick up 10 singles, you can eventually sell them 1031 that and invest in a multifamily somewhere else, right? But it's what works for you now. What's your budget now? And again, if our area is too expensive, Buy another part of the country that that works for, right? So zero in on your target by researching and selecting the group, developing your value proposition, and building a brand. Brand isn't like, you know, uh, Gary V or Nike. Like people think you have to build this uh, on this thing that's so big. A brand could be as simple as, if you've ever driven through most of these neighborhoods in Philly or Southwest, you see signs on every corner that says we buy houses cash, right? Every every telephone pole stick. That's one wholesaler going around just putting up signs, right? And that's their brand, right? And they're getting calls. And they're not actually buying those houses. They're wholesaling. But that's their brand. Their brand is the the sign guy or you know, whatever. So understand the market you're targeting see what other investors are doing and figure out how you're going to, how you're going to dominate. It could be, you're the mail guy. You're going to send out a bunch of mailings. Well, that can add up. Do you want to do that day one? Probably want to do that after you've done a few deals, right? Uh, o is for own 
the mind share of your market. So understand, you know, the market you're you're working in. Uh, understand the people that you are working with. A lot of the times, when you find a deal with one person, because they can connect you to other deals. Like if they have that one deal, maybe they have other properties they're looking to sell. Maybe they have family members that need to sell properties in that area. Uh, understand your the the market you're investing in, adapt to it, respond to it the way you should, and it will help you generate the leads you need to feed the business. So build through networking. Networking is huge. Go to events in the neighborhoods, right? Like go to the zoning hearings. Go to go on meet up and see if there's like uh, an a, a, a an event like this happening or uh, other events, you know, um, uh, like family days, things like that. Go to these events, understand your market, talk to people and let them know who you are. And if you're just being honest and let them know, hey, if you ever know anyone that's looking to buy or sell, or sell a house in this area, I buy houses in this area. Here's my card. Please have them call me. Like you're, you're building who you are just like you would with any other business. It's the same for real estate investing. Prospecting, so this is outbound activity that you're you're trading your time for leads. Basically, um, you could make offers on listed properties. So again, that's properties on the market. Checking newspapers, Craigslist, Facebook, and local sources for deals and listings. Go door to door or calling for sale by owners. There are for sale by owners out there. You know, you, it's as simple as going on Zillow and searching by for sale by owners and there's a ton of for sale by owners still trying to sell their houses by themselves and a lot of them are struggling and they're sitting there a lot of them are just saying hey i don't want to pay an agent but if you bring me a buyer i'll pay you a commission and well if you're the buyer you can get the property cheaper right because they don't have to worry about the commission and then you're negotiating for yourself and you know if they're not represented they're going to make some mistakes probably and if, as an investor you're hoping for that. So for sale by owners are a good source. Door to door, this is a great one. And there's a few ways to go door to door. You don't have to physically go door to door yourself. You could, if you want to, you have a lot of time. You could pay someone to hand out flyers in the neighborhood for you. You can talk to Uber drivers and say, hey, you work in this area? Here's a bunch of my business friends. People that you're dropping off here, give this to them. If you ever drive by a vacant home or house that looks like it's falling over, can you send me a picture of it? Like, you don't need to do the work yourself, right? Uh, if you're, you, you can have people that are out there doing it and they get you, they get a finder's fee. Why wouldn't they do it? They're already out there, right? If you're working a job, full-time job, like most of us are, to pay for this, have someone else that's already in the market do this for you. Talk to the postman. Hey, you drop it off. A lot of mail at a house that is piling up. You let me know, like, you know, give you whatever, 10, 15 bucks a lead, or if I, if I buy it, I'll give you a hundred bucks. Like talk to people that are in these neighborhoods, go to the local township, ask about tax or uh, uh, notices, high grass, you know, notices that people are getting a lot of complaints about a property that's vacant, unkept, you know. Will we give that out? Uh, yeah, it's probably good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's other ways to target a neighborhood outside of just listed properties. And again, you're looking for deals, you gotta do some digging, but you'll find one. So networking, like we said, you know, letting people know about your business, <clears throat> how you can help again, as an investor. And I think people are kind of hip to the wholesaler thing because it's the same script a lot of these guys are using where they're calling and trying to find out the seller's motivation and they want to get a deal done. And most wholesalers are starting, don't have any money. So they're just like trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, if you're an actual buyer, you're actually a cash buyer and you find a distressed property or someone that needs to sell, you know, showing them available funds is huge, right? I don't go in there with your account that has, 500,000 and if you're trying to pay them market value for their house or less than, 
show them an account that matches what you're trying to pay them for it. A lot of the times they're getting calls, they're getting texts from these guys just trying to get a deal under contract so they can sign it. If you're an actual investor and you show up and you say, hey, no, no, I can actually close. Here's my proof. They'll sign with you versus them. A lot of these people are in situations that they need to sell this property. There's a, their tax liens, they're going to lose it. They're going to lose all their equity. Um, there's municipal problems. There's bankruptcy issues, you know, squatter issues. If you take the problem away and you help them with the problem, that's your value add and they'll sell it to you for less, right? You know, they call your average realtor and say, I got to sell my house, but I have a squatter in there. And I hear it, so God, what am I going to do? You know, I can't even show it. Uh, you're an investor. You're like, don't worry about it. You know, we'll take care of that. You know, we had a situation like that where uh, the squatter property and it literally this guy wouldn't respond to anyone who's in the property and showed up one day, a bunch of empty cans, beer cans outside, everything. So he went to the local liquor store and showed up with a 30 pack. He started talking right away. Mm -hmm. the guy, he was out of there within a couple of weeks. Like you adapt to who's in there, right? People don't want to deal with that. If you're an investor, you have to deal with some of that. Uh, you know, being, you know, you're being in the right place, obviously, you're attending events like this. Tell everyone in the world that what you're looking to invest. In. So I talk to everyone about the Burr Method, right? Like anyone that will talk to me, I'm a little annoying about it because it's what I want to do. It's what I enjoy. I see so much benefit in it. I talk to regular home buyers about it because of products like 203Ks that you can buy a house, fix it up with the bank's money and move in there. And then a year later, refinance it at market value and get rid of your PMI. Like that's the Burr method. It's the same thing just for regular home buyers. If you are willing to get a little creative and get a little dirty in terms of doing some work, you can create a ton of equity, a ton of value that you didn't have just a year ago. Um, so I love the Burr method. I talk about it all the time. And people bring me deals, you know. Um, become a connector. I'm kind of huge on this because I have a lot of contacts in my phone. Years of selling houses, you tend to stack up contractors and insurance people. And so anytime a client or a investor texts me, I'm like, yeah, I used these five guys and they were good. Try one of them. You know, like I know the guys not to refer because they screwed me, right? You know, and those that to me is like a version of karma, you know, like if you screw someone over, they don't refer you out ever. And that's probably the only karma you'll get in most cases. So, uh, and then build a dream team. So, you know, we covered this here, great, but it is an investor. You want your contractors, you want your lenders, you want your realtors, you want your title people, you want a dream team. Right. If you have people that you work with over and over and over again and they're doing right by you, pay them well, you know, because plenty of people that will screw you out there. And uh, if you find the right people, you can become very successful. And like I said, with the marketing, it might be that Uber driver, you know, that is very proactive. And every time they're driving through the neighborhood, they see a house that's like the grass is high and they're like, hey, check out this address. So you go and you pull the name for that person and you call the family and maybe living in Texas now and they don't pay attention to it. You know, that's the, that could be the, the a person that gets you a ton of deals. So marketing is huge. Just like in anything, you're running a business, you need to market. So uh, if you're using money to leverage, to deliver a message that will get the phone to ring, right? Postcap cards, door hangers, start a website, Google, direct mail, social media. The same thing you do for really any business. If you think about it, when you're starting a business, you're like, what are the things I have to do to market my business? It's the same thing you do for running your investment, right? And finding deals. You need a message that is tailored to the audience you're trying to help. So you're an investor. You're not trying to sell pretty houses. Right? You're trying to buy ugly houses. We buy ugly houses, right? That's a company. 
They're tailored to their market. It's branding, right? And it's for nature and grow your database. This is the same thing with every type of uh, business, but the best business is repeat business because the people already trust you. They've worked with you. They know you won't do a wrong. They know you're not going to say, I'm going to buy your house. And then you can't find an end buyer. So you terminate the contract. They know you'll actually deliver. So they're going to refer you to people. They're going to say, hey, I have friends and family that will uh, that need help. And this guy will close, you know, nurture your database, take care of them. You know, they find you a deal, throw them a referral fee, you know, like uh, take care of them. It's even as simple as a gift card. Like it is a big deal when you pay back your, your database. As you grow in communities, it's important to, uh, like the biggest thing for me is just having good, reliable properties, Right. If you're a landlord that takes care of your properties, sure that you show that you care about your properties, you'll get very little problems. And eventually, if you build enough in a in a community, you want to invest in that community, right? So uh, it's important. Now, if you're a new landlord, this isn't something you're thinking about yet. You're just thinking about getting properties, taking care of them, building it up. Eventually, when you get to the point that you're owning a lot of properties in a certain area, I want to start doing more for that area. <clears throat> this is pretty self-explanatory in terms of that. So, you know, by following the zone roadmap, you create a high, a highly targeted sales and marketing machine that brings you leads and deals predictably month in and month out. So what is your dream team? No one succeeds alone. You'll need partners, service providers, contractors, even like a mailer. If you find a good person that does your mailing for you, I could save you a ton of money and time, right? Um, uh, and others just to perform the basic tasks required to invest in real estate. But some of them will be superstars, right? If you have a good realtor, <laughs> you're a superstar, right? So here's some of the things you need to build in member wise, settlement agents, title companies, title companies are huge. And if you guys have a good title company, I got you. Uh, but title companies are huge because let's say you're going to the sheriff sale, right? Now here, I've had this mistake twice, it seems, in the last six months. I've had investors come to me that went to the sheriff's sale and bought a property without doing a title search before. And I'm like, what? What? It's like, but deals are starting to come back to the sheriff's sales, and investors are finding these deals, and they're forgetting one of the main steps, right? Let's say you're going to the Delaware County Sheriff's Sale. You pull the list, you eliminate the ones that don't make any sense. Let's say there's a hundred properties. There might be 10 on that list that actually make sense buying based on the upset number, which is the loan amount that needs to be paid off, right? So you find the 10 that are worth buying. Then you drive by them to make sure they're not falling over. And you're probably at five at that point. Then you say, okay, I'm going to go to a title company and run a soft title search, which is basically, it's like, it could cost you 50 bucks, maybe a hundred dollars. And they will search and let you know if they see anything that stands out, like any judgments. I remember the, the sheriff sale list is put out at least a month in advance. So you have plenty of time. A title company can do this in a couple of days. You might be able to do it right then if they're not too busy. Then you'd feel more comfortable going to the sheriff sale and buying this property. Don't skip that step because uh, as an investor comes here and I, we, we talked and he bought a property in Philly and there was a second mortgage that wasn't recorded when he got the property. And that second mortgage was in the first mortgage was like 101 property was worth 170 and he was going to put 10 or 50 in second mortgage was 60. So it was just like enough to put him right over the hundred percentage. And he's like, so, you know, he's trying to back out of that with the lawyer and it, but it, it sucks. Like that can happen. So title companies are huge, not just for ensuring your title on regular deals, but for protect, protecting you up front. Um, hard money lenders, uh, contractors, suppliers, 
staging companies, real estate agents, attorneys, divorce attorneys. Divorce attorneys are big. Remember, you're trying to help people. A lot of the times, a lot of the most difficult transactions we get even as realtors are estate deals. Like when a seller is in either just passed away and they didn't have anything figured out, like no estate planning, so no will, none of that, it becomes a ton of paperwork. You need an attorney. You don't want to try to do it yourself. I've I've tried. I'm like, this is this is a this is worth an attorney's pay. And there's two attorneys that'll do all this for you for like 2500 bucks, you know. So it's worth it. Wholesalers, again, if you're looking for deals, wholesalers are bringing you deals. You find a good wholesaler that's not too big where they have this massive game plan where they need to make 20000 plus on every deal and they're cutting as much meat off the bone. And not too small where they're just getting started in order to make a ton of mistakes. Somewhere right in the middle, you'll get a good wholesaler, right? <laughs> Uh, network with your team. So remember, um, your contractors, they're probably not just working for you. If they are, I feel bad for them, right? Because they need other work. They're probably getting calls at job sites for people to bid out jobs. And that seller's thinking, man, I don't want to do this. I just want to sell it. And they're asking them. One of the best deals I ever got, my electrician got for me. He didn't get, like, guy called him to rewire the house. He told him a bit. And the guy's like, I don't want to deal with this. I just want to sell it. And he's like, I know this guy that buys houses. I went to the house. There were other people looking at it. I gave him an offer and he took my offer. Like, and it was a way better offer than I would have paid on the market for that house. So your contractors can find you deals. Like, don't forget that. And anyone around you, I even talk to other agents all the time. Me as an agent, I say to agents, hey, if you find me a deal, I'll use you as my agent. And if you want the outsale, I'll give it to you too. Right? Like, I don't. I, if you bring it to me, I will reciprocate, right? That's fair. So, and I do this in, especially like I, I invest now in Pittsburgh and I've probably took, talked to 10 agents there and they're all sending me deals. I bought three so far using those agents because they got me a good deal, right? So that's like, if you can find anyone in your network to talk to about what you're doing, network with, they can bring you deals. All right, so that wraps up the grid presentation. I wanna go over some of the things, like I said, that I do more locally <clears throat> that uh, I think will be really helpful. As a you know local investor that, again, doesn't do this full time, you kind of have to build out <clears throat> how much time you want to spend on this, right? So just like anything, it's time blocking, right? I know, you know, my typical schedule of how it should look every week, how much time I'm going to spend on work versus with family versus with investing never works out perfectly because I got two kids and a wife, you know, so. But uh, in most cases, I want to spend an hour, five days a week, on my investing, right? And that's looking for deals. So I usually do it at night because that's the only time my house is quiet or my phone is quiet. And I am doing a few things. Number one is, <laughs> what's happening over there? They're working on the roll <clears throat> um, <clears throat> So number one is, I, um, number one is I, I have a separate email that I ask agents to send me deals to because man, my inbox gets packed, right? So I need to shut that off for a second and go to focus on this. So I go to that inbox Mondays. I look through all the deals agents send me. And you know what? If it sells too fast, I wasn't going to win it anyway. So I'm okay with just looking once a week, right? Because I'm looking for deals with equity. And if it was a bidding war, multiple offers, it wasn't going to work for me. So it's okay. I'll look at that inbox once a week. 
right? I go through, I evaluate those properties. Evaluating those properties depends on what you're looking for. Look for a flip. It's just, what do I fix it up for? What do I sell it for? If it's a burr, you're playing, you're, you know, you're playing, with, well, what can I, can I raise the rents to? What's going to be worth after? It's a little bit more of an evaluation, right? Um, number, then Tuesdays, I have a, uh, I have an ISA, so a, a sales agent virtually that I'm feeding lists to. It's like multifamily properties in every county in Pennsylvania. And I'm just having them call, right? And if it's a prop, if the, if the seller is interested in selling, send me a message, set up a call with me, and I'll call that person back, right? And I have a conversation with that seller. And it, usually it's just the beginning, but eventually it, I've had it lead to deals. I've probably seven properties I own in Carbon County that I got this way, right? So it can be very, very profitable. And you can find amazing deals. But you can't jump on everything. And uh, sometimes sellers will give you a price that makes total sense. You don't beat them up. You know, the ones I got that I like, they gave me the price. It's like, all right, cool. You know, that, that works. So that's another way. I'm marketing without marketing. I'm not there. I have a virtual assistant that I'm paying $4 an hour in the Philippines. They're working two hours a day for me. So that's $8 a day for five days a week. And so 40 bucks a week. I'm giving them the list that I found on, you know, list.com or whatever. And they're calling. And I'm my inbox is filling up. And I'll call these people back. And I will find deals. So it's worth the 160 bucks a month I'm spending. Because if I get one deal a year off of it, it makes tons of sense, right? That's one way to market and find deals without doing any work, really. You're not doing the hard work, which is getting all the no's, you know. Um, then you have your sheriff sales, your, you know, tax sales, your uh, uh, default sales. That's another list you look at. I only look at two counties for that. I still look at Delaware County because I like the punishment. And then I look out over in Allegheny and Washington County. So that's more, more uh, affordable for me. and there's deals so look at that um then i still look at the mls and for you know regular consumers that's your zillows you know your realtor.com look on those websites there are going to be deals out there look they're worth looking i found a lot of properties i bought have been on those those sites um but also look on sites like loopnet because that's where commercial realtors post. And there's a lot of commercial properties on those sites that aren't getting paid attention to by all of the other residential buyers. So I found deals on LoopNet, you know, that even they're like duplexes sometimes or a five unit or a, a storefront with an apartment above it that people aren't paying attention to because they're not in the MLS. So LoopNet I think is huge. Um, there's also a website called Biz Buy Sell. It's actually owned by CoStar, the company that owns LoopNet and Homes.com. And uh, they, it's if you're an, uh, a business owner, you're looking to sell your business, you can have you can post it yourself, or you can have an agent post it on there for you. And a lot of those will be like uh, laundromats, but they're selling the building with it too, and you'll find deals on there, all right? You'll be surprised how profitable some of these businesses are that people just want to get out of. So that's another way to find deals that you don't have to look specifically for the real estate. You can look for the business and the real estate comes with it, right? Um, and then I have my list of wholesalers that I go down and I take a look at. And then I go on social media. I look for deals through social media, right? So I go on... Uh, I post, I go on these like different groups and I ask if anyone has a deal. You know, there's so many ways to find deals that you could do yourself without spending money. Really not spending, outside of my ISA, I'm not spending money. These are all free methods of marketing myself to find deals, all right? So you can build out this whole marketing plan and get intricate with it, or you can just 
do these things, you know, for a half hour a day and find yourself a deal, right? And if you find one deal that way every six months, it's a property you own, you know? So it's worth the time. So that's all I have. Questions. So is there a, a way, like one of the wholesalers I deal with, at least three or four deals he's brought my way that I didn't end up getting out of it, I didn't end up taking any of it. But they were all in pre foreclosure. So my thinking is he's just getting the list of all the people on pre foreclosure and he's just calling. You know, the plans, you have know, a couple here, a couple there. Um, is there any way I can get my hands on that list? Yeah. Uh... So, Websites. There's like list.com, all the lists. There's a few websites you can go on and they'll build the list for you. It's very cheap. It's okay. like sometimes it's like 10 cents a phone number. It's not expensive. Um, you put in what you're looking for. And that's what I do for like my ISA. I have someone that builds a list and sends it to them. It's the same thing. So that's what these wholesalers are doing. They're paying for these lists and they're doing it. You can also go on Zillow and do a search by pre foreclosures. It's not super accurate. Okay. <laughs> like the one point, my neighbor's house was on there. Like he was like, "Will, why is my house on pre foreclosure?" <laughs> I'm like, "Paying your mortgage." He's yeah. like, "Yeah." I'm like, but "It's you know, just file a claim with Zillow." But yeah. so will it uh, let you know uh, what their mortgage is? It will not. Um, there's a few ways to do that, right? The easiest way is just to call them and ask them, yeah. right? Like. You're talking to them, and obviously that's a tough conversation, but yeah, they have thick skin. So, hey, look, I saw your house up for foreclosure. I don't want you to lose your place and your equity. Like, probably help you out here. I know what the market value is. I'm sure you know, too. What, what do you owe on it? Like, what can I get you out of this for and help you get some money so you don't lose your house and everything you've built in it? I will tell you, right? Oh, I owed 200 and it's, you know, I know it's worth it. Right? I just don't have the money to pay for it. All right, let's work something out, you know? I cash, I can buy this and pay it, but you know, we got to talk to your bank, right? You have to make sure you're talking to the bank because the bank doesn't know this is happening. They're going to foreclose on it. Right. So, or the bank's lawyer, most likely. Um, but yeah, that's a great, that's a great method of, of getting properties for sure. You know, and I think you're doing that seller a favor. Some people only get, want to get out of their own way and they're just like, screw it, take it. You're going to run into that a lot, but a foreclosure stays on your credit for seven years. Rex puts you in the 400s, which is hard to do, you know. And uh, if you pay it off before it forecloses, you can rebuild your credit pretty quickly. And you don't have that foreclosure. You can buy a house pretty quickly again. So, you know, and, you know, America's land of second opportunities, and third and fourth and fifth. So yeah. why, why make it harder for yourself? Just work with me and I'll buy your house and then you can rebuild you know so yeah pre foreclosure is a good one yeah so when all these deals come your way do you have like a like a bucket you put it in because if you're if you're looking for multifamilies right mm -hmm. so you just have your isa just look for multifamilies and then the the deal comes your way and then another day you're looking for single families or is it just like i'm what i'm saying is all these avenues you're just mm -hmm. trying to pull one on the property yeah right. so i'm at it as a realtor i have options because like someone brings me a deal that doesn't make sense for me i can list it or i might have other buyers are looking to buy it but um for me i know what i'm looking for that that's my focus right mm -hmm. everyone's focus changes or starts somewhere else you might just be looking for flips there's guys that make a lot of money just doing flips every year you might be looking for a single family or duplexes. That's fine. You know, I was there. Now I'm like, I don't want anything less than five units. And if it's less than that, I don't even need to, to have a conversation with them. Like, I just want to focus on that in a certain price point. So I'm looking 30 to 50K per unit maximum. So because a four unit Delco in Darby is 450 now, you know, so... No, I can't buy that. Doesn't can't buy it. You will not like unless you're living in one of those units. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense for you, or you buy in cash, which I don't know why you would, you know. 
So uh, figure out what you're looking for and then target the areas that make sense. I don't have these ISA calling Philly or Delco or Chester County or Montgomery County or Bucks County because yeah. you're not going to find anything for that price in those areas. It'd be a waste of your time. But all the other counties. Yeah. And how successful are you with uh, Craigslist? I've never found a deal on Craigslist, <laughs> so zero. <laughs> but they're out there. I've heard people that search Craigslist for deals and find them. Yeah. So it's just more of me not trying than in it ever. So add it to your list. You know, there's so many things you can do. Sometimes you just don't even get to all of them. You yeah. know, but I've never tried it. But I'm sure. You know, I'm sure you can buy deals on it. Yeah. I would watch out for a lot of scams on Craigslist. That'd be my That's only concern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I even now we have people who would be like, we just had a girl reach out to one of our agents and someone acting as our agent sent her a lease like on Remax documents. I mean, it was like Remax corporate, you know, like a lease to rent a place in wherever this, whatever. Uh, I think this was like Arizona or something. And um, <clears throat> the, uh, so, and had her send like a security deposit and disappeared of course right and the girls sort of reached out to our agent she's like i don't i don't know what this is and i'm like it's fraud and she's like oh what do you mean i'm like they created an account using you because you're a remax agent they got someone to sign a lease and this person without ever seeing the place signed a lease and sent the money <laughs> like this sucks but so and that all started from craigslist the listing was posted on craigslist someone saw a rental listing stuck the picture posted it on Craigslist saying it's a rental and she saw it on there. So, you know, it's not very, it's not verified on there. It is on a lot of sites um, because a lot of sites are sweeping information from the MLS, whereas Craigslist, you're creating the post manually, right? So you, anyone can post anything, right? So just, just have your guard up, but yeah, you can find deals. Yeah. And then loop, you said loop net, right? Yeah. So that's more so commercial. Yeah. So if you're if you're going on loop net, that's like a that's like a, a two part, but like because you know if they're doing a lot of storefronts, if they're doing anything above a four unit, that's like uh you're taking on something else other than like it's like it's, it seems like the wild west to me at least. Well, I mean, anything over four units is considered commercial. Right. So a five unit apartment building is commercial, right. you know, so it could just be apartments or it could be like a storefront with an apartment above it, or it could be, you know, a laundromat. So like, there's a lot, it's, it's, there's a lot that falls under commercial, but even like a, a residential property that's zoned commercial. So like, you'll see some of these houses that are on like a busy road that used to to be a house and now that all of those properties got zoned commercial so they have to list it commercial that's a there's deals in those because you can buy them and resell them to business owners for more we just right. had a deal like this in hatfield or something where this property residentially was worth three hundred thousand dollars and mm -hmm. it was pinned between two commercial businesses and one of the businesses paid 650 for it because they wanted it that space so bad Thanks. and it was yeah, so you know it's not great for our seller, you know, <laughs> but you know, so there's deals you can find that are like that. Um, and if you're getting creative and converting properties to work too, like I assume like most university type dorm houses would fall under that. So if there's like a house for sale like around here or around Swarthmore College. Only that would be residential. That'd be commercial, you know. And those probably rent for a ton if you're talking about per room, you know. Yeah. You know. So that's another reason. All right, well, everyone on the the uh, the Zoom, I'm, I'm shutting this down now. Thank you for coming.